This, what I'm going to share with you this morning, I have literally been chewing on it for about two weeks. And every time I read it, I, the Lord shows me something else. And I would say if there's anything that I have been after in the last year is to understand the love of God. And you would think as a Christian that you could grab a hold of all that, but I had not. And I was listening to the songs, and when you pray, he answers. And um, this is found in Ephesians chapter 3. And just to give you an understanding, it's a prayer that Paul prayed while he was in prison. And that just, first of all, that blows me away that a man who is in prison would be praying for somebody else. So that first and foremost shows me what the love of God does inside of a person. That even in the midst of probably one of his worst trials, I wouldn't say probably his worst, but he found the love of Christ. And that's what he was trying to tell these people in Ephesians. I'm going to start with verse 14. And he says, when I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. And I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Let me read that again. Your roots will grow sh down into God's love. So to me, when I think about my roots, they keep that love, my understanding of that keeps getting deeper and deeper. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to fully understand, for sure. Then, guys, then you will be made complete with all fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now I understand why he has me on a journey seeking after that love. That's, that's who he is. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power to work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we can ask or think. Glory to him in the church in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and forever as you worship today I don't want you to forget who you're worshiping the one that just simply wants to put his love in you Jesus I pray that today Lord God as we come before you in worship that you would fill us fill us Holy Spirit with that love that supersedes anything Lord God that gives us completeness in you May we remind ourselves, Lord God, what you did on that cross. It was something, Lord God, we could never repay you for. But Lord, just to bring worship to you is just a tiny bit of thanks, Lord. Holy Spirit, I invite you into this room, Lord God. I invite you into my heart. I invite you to fill me, Lord. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would work in us today. I pray that your spirit would fall like never before. That you would open doors that no man can open, Lord God. That you would close doors that no man can close, Lord God. May you show us your strength. May you show us who you are, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. this place. 
Just worship your God right now. He's already in this place. His presence is already here with us today. Let's just begin to worship and praise our God. Let's open our mouth, lift our hands, and give him all the glory and the honor that he deserves. He's a great and mighty God. He's the God who fights our battles. He's the God that loves us unconditionally. He's a God that is with us in every season of our life. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are, oh God. And we give you all honor and glory this morning. When all I see is a battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God, the battle belongs to you And every fear I lay at your feet I'll sing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you If you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see on the ashes, you see the beauty.
says every fear I lay at your feet and I will sing through the night I will sing through the night oh God I will sing through the fear I will sing through the unknown I will sing oh God and I will praise you oh God it says Psalm 63 6 it says I lie awake thinking of you oh God meditating on you through the night because you are my helper. I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings, O oh God, and I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. He's holding us securely. Even when we're singing through the night, even when we're battling fear, he's reminding us that we can trust in him. He's reminding us that he is our security, that we don't need to fear. We don't need to doubt. We just need to stand firm on what he's already spoken to us, on every promise that he has given. We just need to stand on those promises this morning. We stand on your love, oh God. We stand on your promises. We stand on your truth, oh God. Even in the midst of fear and doubt, oh God. We choose to look to you, oh God. We choose to stand on your truth, on your love, on your word, oh God.
this morning, I will not be moved. I will not be shaken because I'm standing firm on your love, oh God. I'm standing firm on your promises, on your word, on your truth, oh God. And I am not going to waver in that, oh Lord. That's so good. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm. through the storm this is how I fight God. oh when I declare that you are Lord over all you God you are with us you are with us oh you're a refuge and a strong time you're our firm 
tell this the Lord this morning I trust you I trust you Jesus I trust your love I trust your mercy I trust who you are I trust who you say you are Jesus I stand on your word I stand on your promises I stand on your firm foundation I stand on the firm foundation that is a resurrected Jesus that's who we stand on this morning and like this song says we're not held by our own strength. We stand on the firm foundation that is Jesus. That's who we stand on. We stand on the rock that is Jesus. And because we stand on a God who cannot be moved, we won't be moved. Amen. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I
time, you know, the last couple weeks that I've been going to the gym with, with our lovely Pastor Leo here, um, you know, I'm reminded of God. I'm reminded of a season about a year ago. And why I say that is because when you're working out with Pastor Leo and he's telling you stuff to do, you're, you're in pain. You're, you are in agony basically the whole time and when I'm in pain and I'm in agony and I'm, I'm working out he doesn't want you to quit right so you're just working out and you're burning and you're just like you're feeling things that you've never felt before and um, and I keep getting reminded of a season when I was in pain about a year ago listen I just want to preface this by saying that we are okay we are fine okay this was a year ago. Uh, my job started reducing the hours that I had. And so I knew it was coming until maybe a month or two after that, we basically uh, I, we got let go. And so during that season, I remember just seeking the Lord with my wife like we never had before. I remember going into this this deep place with the Lord I remember crying out to the Lord I remember praying I remember speaking I remember suffering I remember pain but I also remember that the Lord never failed me and I also remember that I had one thing that remained 
And that was my trust and my relationship in him. We didn't, we didn't lack anything. We didn't need anything. The Lord provided. The Lord provided. And he will continue to do so in my life and in yours if you trust him. If you trust in him, give your life over to him and trust him wholeheartedly. Regardless of the pain that you feel, the things that you may see around you going on, the the difficulties, the circumstances, if you continue to trust in the Lord, regardless of what's going on and what you feel, God will show up. God will reveal himself. God will be known to you. And you will know him like you never have before. If you can identify with that, I want to open up the altar. Amen. Psalms 46, 1 it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Amen. I just want to take this opportunity to present our tithes and offerings in gratitude to the Lord. If you need a 
an envelope, please raise your hand. Oh God. You have never failed us, oh God. You have never failed us, oh Lord. And so in gratitude, oh God, we want to give back to you, oh God. Not just our, our tithes, oh God, or our offerings, oh Lord, but our thoughts, our minds, our bodies, oh, oh God. We want to be living sacrifices, oh God, that honor and glorify you, oh Lord. So allow us to do this as we present our tithes and offerings to you, oh God. Allow us to give with a grateful heart, oh God, knowing what you've done in our lives, oh God. What you've done on the cross, oh God. Allow us to remember, oh God, and trust in you, oh God. And remember our relationship with you, oh God. We thank you and we honor you, oh God. Lord, I also want to present those who are struggling, oh God, to give back to you, oh God. Those who may not be in the best financial circumstances, oh God. I lift them up before you, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. And I pray for a mighty work, oh God. I pray that you reveal yourself to them. Lord, open their hearts, oh God, so that they may take the steps necessary, oh God, so that you may move in their life, oh God. Lord, we honor you and we thank you with this worship service, oh God. Lord, I pray for the word, oh God. I pray for your message, oh God, that you may pour it out upon your people in a powerful, powerful way this morning. We thank you and we honor you. In your heavenly name we pray and we all say amen. Amen. Please come forward to give your tithes and offerings and greet one another in the love of Christ. Amen. And happy Sunday, church. You know, I realized last week that every time I'm up here, I always say, good morning, good morning, and it's usually afternoon. So I, I purposely was looking at the time. I have three minutes left of the morning, so I'm good. I'm good. So good morning. If you're here for the first time, we'd like to welcome you. So look at the person next to you and welcome them home. Welcome home. We have quite a few announcements today. As always, they're always important. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a night in Bethlehem. If you guys remember, no, yes, yes. We had a little, a little production last year. Do you remember a little production? All right. Well, it was actually huge, and it was amazing. And we have a group of people working behind the scenes already planning. So today after church, if you are interested in either knowing what it's about, how you can help, how you can volunteer, or even how you can donate. Please stay today after church, and there's going to be an interest meeting on a night in Bethlehem. Also, if you notice, they have, um, there are some flyers already posted around that has QR codes. There's two QR codes. One is to sign up to volunteer. You can have a speaking role or just a role. Or the other QR code is if um, with the sign-up genius so if, of different items that you can donate. So there are ways that you can help, whether it's being in it or donating, okay? So there are many ways that you can help. So please stay today after church. Is that a fly? Yeah, okay. Um, up next, we have Team Night Fellowship. So last week, it was supposed to be Wednesday last week, but because of this wonderful storm that came, it was postponed until this Wednesday. So if you're not familiar with Team Night, okay, if, if you've been going to connect groups, then it's where all the connect groups come together and join here, and it's a time of fun, food, and fellowship. Can't get better than that. But if you didn't go to a connect group, it doesn't matter. Doors are open for everyone. So please make sure to be here Wednesday at 7.30 um, to, to join in the fun with the fellowship. There's going to be food, and I think there's games, right? That day they play games. Yeah, so come have fun. On Saturday, Saturday, where are my married couples? Come on. You have to sound more excited. You have to sound more excited about that. You have to. Come on. 
Come on, you have to sound excited. All right, so Saturday we have a marriage ministry fellowship. We've been saying it, it is the cheapest date, 25 bucks. Normally you pay 25 bucks for one person, but this is $25 for two, okay? You get dinner and you have another time of fellowship here. It's going to be here at church Saturday starting at 6. If you have any questions or would like more details, please see Gretel or Reina. Also, we have another fun event for the ladies. We have a women's breakfast coming up. It's going to be on Saturday, November 2nd. So we have a few weeks until it, um, until it happens, but we're announcing it early because there is a fee. I think there's a QR code there. You can scan that QR code to register and pay. It's only $20, but it includes breakfast, and there's going to be a time for crafting, which we know, you know, you guys, ladies, I know you like to do that. So um, the good thing is it's open to the ladies. It's also open to the youth girls, sixth grade and up. So if you'd like to um, register, you can scan the QR code. You can also pay, or you can also register through the Church Center app. There's also going to be a table outside today where you can do all of that. So through the um, QR code, you can pay with your card. On the table, you can pay cash or check. So please make sure to register. Hold your spot. Oh, by the way, it's going to be Saturday, November 2nd from 9 to 12. Okay. And then finally, we got the last one. Um, Operation Christmas Child. So this is an important one. Okay, this is a very important one because it's not for us. It's for you to bless a child. Okay, so if um, we announced this a couple weeks ago with a video, and it's a way for you to pack a little box for a boy or a girl, and um, boxes are due Sunday, November 24th. So you have about a month and a half, and you think, oh, that's a lot of time. It creeps up. Okay, it's going to creep up on you, so get those boxes and start filling them up. And if you have any questions on that, you can see Berta. And finally, if you'd like to stay up to date with all things the way, please make sure to download Church Center app and make the way your home church. And now the word with Pastor Leo. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. If you're happy to be here today, can you give the Lord a round of applause as he is faithful. He is good. Welcome, Cato. Yeah. Cato with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, let me get to the word this morning. For those of you who are not aware, Pastor Javi is in Ohio as Ohio is celebrating 40 years of ministry. Yes, praise the Lord for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. So for the last couple of weeks, um, I've been sharing um, the title of God is blank. I heard Pastor Javi jumped on that train too, and uh, he shared last week. Um, I'm continuing on that this week. But before I give you the title, I just have a question for you. It's a question that you should ask yourself because it really, um, really, I think it really guides us in how we act, how we talk, right? Just a quick question for you guys. What are you to God? That's a good question. Huh? What am I to God, you know? For some of us, you may hear that question and say, I'm a child of God, you know? I'm an ambassador of God. I'm an heir of God. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And uh, today I have a verse because I, uh, I, I want to share this verse before we just even jump into the topic. It's found in the book of James chapter 2, verse 23. It says this, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness as he was called God's friend. I hear that and I'm like, God's friend. And today the title is God is relational. Because today I want to talk about how God is a friend. And we are his friend. The fact that we could know God as a friend means that God is a relational God. I want you to think about this statement because I'm not taken away from God's divinity nor the reverence we have towards God, but the fact that you are friends with somebody, it's, it's a lot to say because you trust, you communicate, you feel. It, it's, it's a relationship, right? And, and I want you to think about this. As we think of the Old Testament, we, we see God being referred to as Yahweh, which is Lord. 
And, and we're not taking away from that. But then in the New Testament, we see God referred to as Abba, which is Father. And, and it's not to take away from, but it's to add to the characteristic of who God is. And when you understand that God is your friend and that you have the ability to be friends with the creator of the heavens and the earth, I don't know about you, but I, I feel in all of that. Like, I'm like, whoa. Like, for some of us, when we, we talk about, like, this world, we're like, oh, you know that guy, man? How, how did you get to know? I mean, we know the most important guy in history, in all of creation, which is God, the Father. I, I think that if we really come to understand that we've been created to experience, like we opened up today, God's love. Like that's what you were created for, to experience the love of God. So that not only you experience it, but that you express it through that relationship God gives us that we could call him a friend. I don't remember the song, I am a friend of God. You remember that song? The fact that you can say, man, I am a friend of the most high God. To understand that God is relational. That God has always wanted and forever want a relationship with his creation. Like when you think about yourself and, and sometimes you're like, God, you, you, you really don't want this. And sometimes you, you tell yourself, I don't even want myself. And I mentioned that last time. But that God wants a relationship with his creation. That, that you understand that God desires that to come to pass. And not only that, that he desires it, but throughout scripture, we've seen that God was a, a God who was relational and a God who is relational now. I want to give you some examples here today so that you can open up your eyes a little bit here. Adam and Eve. Yeah. Ask yourself, like, in this walk that you've had with the Lord, what are your experiences with God? I'm here to tell you today that it is my experiences with God that has kept me in my faith. The fact that I have been able to have this relationship with God the Father and have experiences with him here on earth, it has allowed me to stay in my faith. Adam and Eve experience God's grace and his love and God's nurturing care after they failed. That's an experience. That's a relationship. Where God came to them in the midst of their failure and called them out and provided covering for them. That's a relationship. When Noah experienced God, a God who, who cared for his creation and the survival of humanity. And God came to Noah. He had a relationship with Noah. Elijah. Oh my goodness, Elijah. We think so much great things about Elijah. But what, a time, what about the time where his fear was so loud that he couldn't see or hear God at all. But God still came to him in silence and spoke to him. And Elijah recognized that he really wasn't that alone. It's a relationship. God dealt with him. What about Peter with his vision? The vision that blew his mind away and opened this relationship to us all. The vision where it, it, it opened the doors for Gentile inclusion, which is you and I. There was a relationship there. And Paul, the last one, Paul, who he, in a vision, he saw the Lord. And in that vision, that same vision, the greatest enemy of Christianity became the greatest leader of Christianity. A relationship did that. The fact that God was relational with him and stepped in and showed up. I don't know about you, but there are so many times in my life that I wouldn't be here today if God never showed up. If God never showed up and I understood that he desires me, that he wants me, and he created me for a relationship. Oh, man. If we could just come to an understanding and a true belief that God wanted, wants, and will always want for you to know him, for you to discover him in a relational way. Where this isn't about coming on a Sunday just because you have to, but that you have a true relationship with God. Today I can sit here and talk great things about my wife. 
I'm not done. But I can sit here and talk about the ugly things too. She can do the same thing with me because I know her. I could sit here and talk about God the way I talk about him because, not because I'm any better or special or not, but just because I know that I have a relationship with God and I, I can talk about him because I know him throughout the years, throughout the weaknesses, throughout the strengths, throughout the failures, throughout the victories, the wins, the losses. I, I can say that we have a God who's a friend, a God who wants me, and a God that I want as well. You know, when you think of God and, and you think of humanity and creation, I think about how people view God sometimes, and it's, it's as if there's just a God out there that just throws rules and regulations to the people he created, and you have to follow those, and, and that's how it is. And, and yes, to that there is some truth to it, but it just doesn't stop there. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, it says, In teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely... <laughs> I am with you always to the very end of age. God is with us. <laughs> God is with us. This life isn't just about following rules or regulations. This rule is about having a relationship with the creator of the heavens and the earth. And the only way we're able to have that is because of the Messiah, Jesus, who reconnected us back to him when we broke relationships. And today we could stand firm and look into the heavens and say, I have a relationship with the one who created all of this, and he wants me. Give the Lord a clap offering this morning, amen. And I said this already, but I'll say it again far more than anything in my life. And there's been a lot. It's been my experience within my relationship with God that has kept me here. Because if I didn't have a relationship with God, I'm telling you right now, this guy right here would not be here. And I hope you feel the same. Because that's the only thing that holds us. The relationship that God has given us the opportunity to have through his son Jesus. It was because of God's grace showing up in my life. God's love showing up in my life. Just like when I felt like Adam and Eve. My God. Some of us can't wait to see Adam and Eve and talk to them about what they did and say what happened, right? But how many of us do the same thing with God in today's day and age where God has spoken to you and given you standards, requirements, and you go and do as, as you please, and you've been the Adam and the Eve. I'm telling you right now that I've been the Adam and Eve, but you know what? I've also experienced God the way God revealed himself to Adam and Eve when he showed up to them, and he talked to them, and he called them out, and provided for them. That's the kind of God that I have a relationship with, the one who shows me love and shows me grace. It's that God. It's that experience that has continued, uh, to, has allowed me to be in this walk with him. My God, I've experienced him in a relationship where he's encouraged me. I don't know if you've ever needed encouragement, but when you've ever decided to take a step of faith or whenever you don't have the faith to take that step or whatever the case may be and you need encouragement, I'm here today, standing today because of my relationship with the Father, the fact that he is my friend and he encourages me. If you've ever been encouraged, can you nod your head, your head to me? I've been affirmed by God, like his affirmation. It's a relationship. The fact that God has come alongside me when I have felt weak, man, he's given me strength. This is a relationship. This whole religious, the man upstairs and I'm down here kind of thing, it doesn't exist in scripture. God is with us. And not only is he with us, but he desires a relationship with humanity. He's shown it throughout scripture. He's shown it today. Most of you are here today because of the relationship you have with God the Father. But some of you here today have not experienced a true relationship with God. Because when you, true, you experience a true relationship with God, your life will never be the same. And I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm just saying you'll never be the same. You walk differently, you talk differently, you know God, and God knows you. 
In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 17, verses 16 and 17, it says this, And I will ask the Father, oh man, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him but you. Somebody say, but you. Look over to the person next to you and tell him, but you. But you know him. You know him. For he lives with you. Oh, my God. Do you understand what we're reading this morning? Do you understand what it's saying this morning? Like, to know God. Like, God is a friend. God is relational. To know God. To, to really look at God and, and say, God, God lives with me. And he'll be with me. Listen, for those people who feel alone, that is a lie from the devil. God is with you. Give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. In my relationship, I've seen God as my source of hope. Man. As this world can make you feel hopeless, he is my hope. He's been my hope in every moment of despair. Because I'm not exempt from that. None of us are. But he's been my hope. I say these things because to me, this is what has made my relationship with the Lord. And there's so much more, but I'm not going to stay on this. But I want you to understand that you are sitting here today because you have a relationship with the Lord. I hope that's the truth. That's the fact. And to never forget the moments that God has shown up in your life. As he showed up to Adam and Eve, as he showed up to Elijah, as he showed up to Peter, as he showed up to Paul. It's the same God. It's the one that, it's the God who is with you. You know, when, when God walked in the midst of the garden with Adam and Eve and they sinned, it affected our relationship. It really did. But that didn't stop God's plan with humanity. How many people know what I'm talking about? God, when, when humanity failed, it didn't stop God's desire to continue the plan to restore us. And, and I, I want you to understand that because you are important to God. You are his creation. We are his people. Jesus, man. As he sits at the right hand of God, I feel like taking a moment, just talking to him real quick, telling him, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for restoring what was broken in my life. Like he restored my relationship with the Father. That was his responsibility to do, not mine, because I could never do it. So today I sit here, I, 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 I'm sharing with you and sharing my heart with you for you to understand the fact that God went to the extreme of sending his son to restore what was broken. To have a, to have a relationship with the people that turned their back on him because you are his. He is my friend. Never taking away from his divine place as Lord, but... Just another part of his characteristic that makes him God. Like a father, he's a friend. In one of Jesus' last statements on this earth, which to me it's important. How many of the people know what I'm talking about? Your last words on earth, what will they be? I don't know. We're not there yet. But Jesus, he says this in Ephesians. Chapter 19, verse 22. Listen to this verse. It says, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as a chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him... You two are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. Jesus says you will receive the Holy Spirit. 
you will receive a helper and a comforter. That's what he tells us. And here it is clearly saying that the spirit of the living God is dwelling within us and with us. God's spirit is not just with us. It's in us. When Jesus tells his disciples, listen, I'm leaving you a helper. I'm leaving you a comforter. He is telling you that you are going to receive the Holy Spirit. And as children of God, some of you don't know where I'm going, but just listen clearly. He is the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. That's what you get when you have a relationship with the Father. I know friends give gifts. But the gift of God as a friend, like it, there is no other. Man, God's Holy Spirit is given to us as the precious gift of God. I, I want you to see something here this morning. In the Old Testament, people went to the temple, right? They went to the temple. That's, that's the action in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we are the temple. So in the, in the Old Testament, people would go to the temple to see God. And in the New Testament, Jesus allows us to be the temple where God comes to us. If you didn't get that, man, open up your ears this morning. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have the indwelling presence of God within us. That's how important we are to God. That he says, I will give you my spirit. The moment we come to the point of accepting Jesus, we become temples of the Holy Spirit. Temples of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 says this. Do you know, do you know that you yourself are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells in you. For some of you who may not understand that I'm telling you here this morning that there are times where I do things and say things that I don't even know where it comes from, but I really do. There are times when I want to do something and I know what, you know what I'm talking about when you want to do something and you don't do it. You know why you don't do it? Because there's something in you. And that's the Holy Spirit. And our relationship with God the Father is so important that he says, I will leave you a helper and a com comforter. I am such a friend that I am going to leave you a gift that will help you do this thing, this relationship here on earth. Because he's your friend. We often think of God as a distant being, but he is not a distant being. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you've received from God? You are not of your own. Man, when you receive God's presence in this relationship, man, he is with you and he is in you. If we, the church, would live this relationship, man, because God is a friend, God is relational. But if we would just live out what God has given us and promised us, how much more powerful will the church be here on earth? How much more would we be able to do and accomplish on our own with the Holy Spirit and together as a body if we truly had a relationship with the Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth? Man. He's your friend. Can you really understand that God wants to be that close to you? That he's made you his temple? In the Old Testament, from afar, you notice where the, the presence of God dwelt in the tabernacle because God was there. And, and for us in the New Testament, we are walking temples of that presence. Of the holy, divine presence all-powerful God, that God that created the heavens and the earth, the same spirit that rose Christ from the grave, dwells in us. We are walking temples of the Holy Spirit. That's who you are. He's gifted every single one of us. 
He's given us assignments on this earth. Salvation is not just an invitation for heaven. Salvation isn't just, it's not just for that. Salvation is an, an invitation to work with God in bringing heaven to earth. That's it. From bringing heaven to earth, joining God as co-workers and co-laborers. Because he's looked upon me, and not only am I a child, and not only am I all these things, but I am a friend of God. I, I know him. I'm a friend of God. Next time somebody asks you who's the most important person you know, your answer is God the Father. He knows me, and I know him. He's relational. In John 15, verse 5, it says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Praise the Lord. I'm not scared of that verse. I invite that verse into my life. Because I'm going nowhere. I can't. There's nowhere else to go. I've learned that throughout the years. So I'm not scared of this verse. Some of you read that verse and say, oh, my God, will I remain? Not? I'm not scared of that. I invite this verse into my life. But inviting this verse into my life pushes me to working with God and for God in what he has for my life. And it all stems from a relationship that I have with God. We're going to be, we, we are partners with God's work on earth. Can, can you, can, can, do you understand that? Like you don't get into business with anybody. You know what I mean? And God says, I'm getting into business with you. You're going to be working with me. Co-workers, co-laborers. Because not only does he consider me a child, he considers me a friend. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, for you are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. How many of us can agree that apart from God, we can do nothing, right? Apart from God, there's nothing we can do. But as temples of the living God. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, my dad once said that he believes in God. Because I'm a pastor. He says that God exists because. I don't know if it's a compliment or an insult, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. It is what it is. And I always tell individuals that it's because we are the temple of the living God. And the, the spirit of the living God that dwells within us is the reason why we can do the things we do. And we cannot do the things we want to do. Two examples. And these examples, the first one will be quick. The second one will be a little lengthy. But this is what I end with today. Two examples of God being relational. The first thing is, have you ever had a relationship that, and, and if you did, it probably lasted a real, real short time period. But have you ever been in, in whatever you want to call it with somebody where they don't listen? And, and to be honest with you, sometimes being married, sometimes you end up being that person. They have to tell you, hey, are you listening? And they bring you back. They reel you back in. That's me. <laughs> Number one, an example of God being relational is that God hears me. God hears you. God, there's nothing so satisfying than talking to somebody who you know listens to you. And that's part of God's character. He's a friend. He listens. In Scripture, we find so many examples of believers that, believers that have petitions to God, that speak to God. But did you know that God invites your conversation, your prayer? You know how many times the Bible says, ask? Ask me. I've never heard of anybody who's not going to listen who says, ask. Like, no one says ask, and then they turn their back on you. That's a little weird. That's awkward and not right. That just doesn't happen. If somebody says, ask me, you know, if somebody says, hey, ask me, and I ask them a question, and they turn around, you're like, what, what just happened? God doesn't do that. 
But do you know how many times God says, ask me? I really don't have the answer for you, but it's in a lot of places. A lot of places in scripture where God says, ask me. One of them is in the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 8. It says, ask me. And listen to what he says. <laughs> and I will make you the nations. I will make the nations your inheritance. And the ends of the earth your possession. Ask me. Ask me. That's awesome. Just ask me. I'm just going to say it. Lord, forgive me, Jesus. Listen. You don't have because you don't ask. And you don't ask because you don't have a relationship. I know there's a guy somewhere around here by the name of Leonardo Acosta that I can go to that man. And whatever he has, if I ask him for it, he'll give it to me. Because he's my dad and I know him and I have a relationship with him. I wouldn't do that, but I know that he would go to that extent and I would do the same for my children. Wouldn't you, Andres? Right? So, if you know your father, you're going to ask. I mean, there's no way in my mind that I, I think to myself, God's not going to do that or God doesn't want. I don't know. I go to him like my father knowing that he is my father and I'm going to ask him. Number two. A relational God feels us. Sympathy. He's empathetic. That's the kind of God that we have. The definition of sympathetic means feeling or showing concern for someone who is in a bad situation. That is your God. You know, we all suffer. And some suffer a lot more than others and are suffering in a deep way. But God cares for you. God consoles you. Especially when you're in pain and God has compassion for you. That is a relational God. A God who not only hears you, but he feels you. Do you have that person that you know that when you go talk to, they're not only listening, but they feel you? That's God. Paul describes God's empathy like this. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 5. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of compassion. And the God. Come on. Are you guys? I'm excited. Of all comfort. That means that no matter what you go through. I know sometimes people say, you don't know what I'm going through. And the answer to that is, you're absolutely right. But God does. Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Who comforts us. In all our troubles. So that. Anyone been comforted in the house of the Lord? If God has comforted you, can I see your hand before? My question to you is, who are you comforting? Because God just doesn't do things to do things. The word of God says. So that we can comfort those in any trouble. With the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. I don't know if you've ever been here, but it's hard to connect with somebody who's never experienced suffering. It's hard. And it's, it's hard to even find that, but for somebody who's never experienced what you suffer, it's hard to connect with them. But when you find somebody who has suffered in the same areas of life, man, you, you, you form a bond, right? You really do. My point is that the unaffected really can't relate to what you're feeling. But Jesus, your sympathetic high priest, who walked on this earth and was fully God and fully man, knows how you feel. You have somebody in heaven who you could go to and know for a fact that he feels you. A non-relational God doesn't have sympathy. A God like that cannot comfort. But a relational God is empathetic and sympathetic. A relational God is the one we have, but is one who empathizes and understands our suffering, sufferings. He is the God of all comfort. Of all comfort. That's why today, 
your conclusion should be that God is your very best friend. And finally, relationships matter to Jesus. Being relational matters to Jesus because he showed it in his ministry on earth. You know, Jesus valued relationships so much that throughout Scripture, I want you to see this, that he, he valued his relationships so much with people that when you read the story of Jesus in Scripture, you will notice that most, if not all, miracles, especially first, which is an important one, but whatever, all of Jesus' ministry life, most of them came while he was walking and talking in different places. They barely came, if they did, very few came in a synagogue. Jesus wasn't all robed up and decked out in a synagogue with the others teaching. He was outside of it. Revealing the relationship he had with the Father to others. His ministry really, really was exposed outside of the synagogue. His closest of friends were prostitutes, bullies, thieves, and fishermen before they came into a relationship with him. Jesus was all about being relational and building relationships. That's what discipleship was. That's what he did with the 12. He shared his life with them the same way God wants to do with us. I mentioned it, but can you imagine his very first miracle? It was in a wedding. I would think, man, call every priest around here and every religious leader and every individual who claims to know the law, bring them right here in front of everybody and watch me shine. But no, he didn't take it to the synagogue. He took it to a wedding with his friends, his mom, and he did his thing because he was all about relationships. Jesus' entire ministry was based on relationship. And it's still that way. I think of our lives and the fact that, you know, I mentioned it last time. When we say we're Christians in today's day and age, you really don't know what you're getting when you say that. You don't know what you're getting. You're like, Christian? Like, where, well, how, what kind do you believe? Like, where exactly do you stand? Like, right now, Christian is just very... And I, I, I spoke last time and I mentioned how I like the term followers of Jesus is much better, right? Yeah. So when I, I, I think of a follower of Jesus, how do people know we're followers of Jesus? How do people know we're Christian? How do people know we have a relationship with this God? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Maybe you sit here today and you're like, well... It's my morals, it's, you know, it's, it's my ethics, it's my lifestyle. Or, or maybe, just maybe you think it's because of your posts on social media. Maybe, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what is your barometer here or what you think of what makes me a Christian is blank. Because I'm telling you what, the world doesn't care about your ethics. The world doesn't care. The world doesn't care about your morals. They don't care about your social media. The world doesn't care. You won't touch a soul. The Bible says, John 13, verse 34 through 35, a new command I give you. <laughs> Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. Can you read that on your own? The last part. By this. By this. It doesn't say because of your attendance on Sunday or what you do for the hands of God or the church you lead in the connect group or if you're too busy, if you're a Sunday church. I don't know. Whatever you want to do there, whatever you want to put on that spot. It, that, I'm Christian.
when you have a relationship with one another, when you don't hate each other, when you don't gossip about one another, something happens when love is seen. Jesus is saying that you'll be known by your relationships. Listen, if, if, if you cannot get along with anybody, let me be the one to tell you, you may be the problem. One person, two people, third one, but once we get down the line and everyone is the problem, we may come to a conclusion that it may be you, maybe, maybe. Christians are seen in the way they love. And what does that mean? And I'm finishing here. What does that mean? How do you forgive? How do you forgive? How do you extend grace? All these things that we receive in our relationship with the Father. Do you care for others? Do you care for others? Do you care for people? I know humanity has come a long way and it's hard, but we can allow the way people act to affect the way we act. How well do you resemble his image? We must know and we must be individuals that instead of breaking so many relationships, we should be working on restoring them. Our love for people identifies our Christianity. Our love for one another does. Because it's the love that God has shown us. And when you are a true re recipient of God's love and you are a friend of God, you can be the very best friend to the person in need. I want to tell you this loud and clear. The world is starving for good friendships. Starving. The world is starving for somebody to step into their lives and be someone that they can trust. That they feel cared for. They're starving for it. And in today's day and age, there's so many avenues that you could do that. Listen, Junior, thank you for the, for the plug-in today. Any plug-in is better than no plug-in. But I don't have to mention Jesus to you one, one time. And just the way I relate to you, you'll know something's different about me. Look, I'm not the kind of guy who remembers 25 scriptures. Dean, Giovanni, my goodness, at the hearing them talk, I'm like, whoa. Where do they get it from? But that's them. That's not me. I, don't, I, I can't memorize all those scriptures. I can't. I can do a lot of other things, but I can't. So I don't have to quote you a scripture. I don't even have to invite you to church. But you'll know something's different about me just by me bringing pain into your life, Junior. Just by that. Because you're going to keep going and you're not going to quit. There's a bottom line here. I know it hurts. I know they're going to fail you. I know they're going to do this. At the end of the day, God doesn't do so. It's the same thing. Same thing. You don't have to go to school to know the Bible. You got to know God to know the Bible. The Word of God says when the disciples were walking, they said to them, we know that they are with Jesus because of the way they I want that. But in order to have that, you need to have a relationship with God. And I'm here to tell you today that God is relational. He is your friend. I end with that. Let's all stand. Give the Lord a clap off for you today, amen. Today, if you... Uh if you lack a relationship with God, there is nothing that you can do or will do 
that he's going to look at you and say, I'm not your friend anymore. <laughs> I think the distance that we create between God and, and ourselves, it's, it's created because of us. Because God is always there. As a matter of fact, I think that when we even do things that are wrong, God works in ways that he tries to get our attention like he did with Adam and Eve. That's just the God who we have. He's a friend. I want you to leave this place here today forever remembering that God is many things. And that is truth. But when you leave here today, I want you to sit in your car before you leave here and say, God is my friend. God is my friend. And I am a friend of God. If you're struggling today, believing that you are his friend, man, just silence the voice of the enemy right where you're standing today. Accept God's goodness, his grace, his mercy, his compassion. Man, and let your eyes, your spiritual eyes be open to the fact that God loves you so much. He sent his son to die for you to restore a friendship that he has, he is, and he will forever desire with humanity. God will forever desire you. Think about that as we close off in prayer. God, today I, I humble myself before your presence. And God, even in moments when I think you should leave me, moments where I see myself for who I really am. You stay with me, God. You dwell in me, oh God. And today as your church, Father, we are grateful that we don't have to go to a temple, but we are the temple that we don't have to go search for your presence because your presence is in us. Listen, before I take another breath or I say another word, can you just thank God right where you're at for the relationship that he offers you? The relationship that he's made available to you through his son, Jesus. If you don't know, I want to let you know that there is no way you can have a relationship with God if it isn't with Jesus. Because without him, you cannot have it. He is the only way to the Father. Today, I thank you, God. Thank you so much. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your compassion, God. Thank you so much. Thank you for your affirmation, God. Thank you for your hope, God. I recognize that you are the one who brings the good into this relationship. I recognize that. I thank you and I'm humbled that you can even call me friend. When you are Yahweh who spoke this world into existence. You spoke my name as well. Thank you. I see you as Lord. I see you as Father. But I see you as friend. It's in Jesus' name. And together we all say, give the Lord a clap offering today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Greet one another in the love of Christ. We'll see each other on Wednesday. May the Lord bless you. Amen.